Hi team, I hope you're all well. Today we are going to be going through my final books TBR. I'm not going to explain to you what these books are about. Specifically, I'm just going to show you what I've got so that I have a record of what I've got left um, and hopefully get some of these done and dusted in March for the month long round of final book support group. If you don't know what final book support group is, I will leave a link to the original announcement video in the description box down below and up here. But very briefly, it's basically a support group where we support you to finish the final books in your TBR. We essentially support you to read pretty much anything. We're just a support group for reading. But I do host readathons every other month, so bi-monthly, whether they be, they range from 24 hour all the way up to a month long just depending on the time that I can allocate for the month. Um, and we dedicate those readathons to finishing final books. So I'm very excited because the upcoming final book support group readathon for round five is a month long in March and I cannot wait. Again, I will leave the announcement video for round five in the description box down below as well as the original announcement video for final book support group explaining exactly what it is. Um, so please feel free to go and check those out and if you would like merch from us um, you can also find the description you can also find the link in the description box down below for Redbubble for jumpers, t-shirts, sweaters, mouse mats, water bottles, anything uh, from Redbubble and also for bookmarks from Daisy and Bee I will leave the link to our shop in the description box down below as well if you would like to check them out. So without further ado I have 34 books to show you here on my final book TBR. Shocking, I know. So, I've kind of split these up into some uh, different categories just to make it a little bit easier for my brain to comprehend what's going on here. So to start off with, I do have two graphic novels. So we've got Check Please, uh, book two, Sticks and Scones. So this is a sports graphic novel following our main character and basically he's on the hockey team but he is gay and he falls in love with the team captain Jack and uh, it's basically their love story. It's done in kind of like a vlog style kind of thing he's also a vlogger and he loves to bake hence the sticks and scones but i absolutely loved the first one so i'm excited to get to the second one as well so i do have that one and then i also have the doors to nowhere by chris grine which is the second in the secrets of camp whatever series i read the first one last year or the year before actually i think for camp believeathon i really really enjoyed it this is a middle grade series where our main character goes to camp but it turns out that it all is not as it seems and um, there is a fantastical element to this camp and it was very very good and I had a really good time 12 year old Willow um so I really enjoyed the first one and I would like to get to this one as well I'm I'm fully aware I think actually I think I'm aware that this is not the final book in this series but it's the final one that's out right now so for example um with this a uh, volume three will probably come out but right now volume two is the final book out in the series so there'll be a few of those within this list so just be wary of that then i do have one that is like a dystopia type novel and that is timber dark by darren charlton i did read wranglestone when it first came out years and years ago and really really enjoyed enjoyed it and i was so excited to hear that there was a second one coming out but i haven't picked this up yet this is the one with the beautiful sprayed edges as well from waterstones um and this is a queer dystopia book basically about these people that have a settlement on ice the zombies cannot get across when it's water but when it is ice and it's very very cold they can and they try to keep themselves safe and we're following our main character cooper who has the hots for one of the other guys that he lives with in the settlement but um is basically just trying to survive and keep his family alive and uh, it was really good and I had a really good time with it so I'm very excited to continue on with this one just haven't had a chance to pick it up yet so looking forward to that one then I do have Bloody Rose by Nicholas Ames which is the second one in the Kings of the Wild series I enjoyed Kings of the Wild I've got no idea why I haven't picked this one up yet it's been on my um, unhaul cart for ages um, and I just haven't had the balls to get rid of it yet. And it turns out one of my patrons has actually put this in my Patreon cup 
to read. So I think I'm just holding out for that to come out, to be perfectly honest. Um, in Kings of the Wild, we were following some retired mercenaries who ended up coming back together to save Bloody Rose, um, who was the daughter of one of the mercenaries. And then in this one, I think we're following her on a mercenary mission. I don't know if the guys come back together or not, but uh, we're following her in this one. So um, intrigued, looking forward to it. Should be a good time. And then also for adult, I think this is adult anyway, fantasy, we have The Burning God by R.F. Kwong. At this moment in time when I'm filming, I haven't read um, The Dragon Republic, but it's on my February TBR and I'm going to be reading it and it will at least be started by the end of Feb if not finished. So The Burning God is going on here because I do want to pick this up in March. I am buddy reading it with a group of my friends so I would like to get through this in March it's definitely going on my March TBR for final book support group this is a fantasy series following a young girl called Rin who manages to get into uh, military school and she ends up going off to war and it's basically goes through how dark military school can be and war can be and uh, it's quite terrifying so I enjoy it it's a good time well, it's not, but I have a good time with it. Then we do have some romance books. A lot of these are actually more like companion novels, but they are deemed part of a series on Goodreads and stuff, so why not? Uh, we have The Legacy by L. Kennedy, which is the off-campus book five. Uh, I think this went on this list last year. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, and I haven't picked it up yet. It's not even that long, so it would be perfect to pick up in March just to add to and get off of my list. Uh, this, basically, the off-campus series follows a group of guys from a hockey team uh, essentially falling in love with a girl. Not one girl, all four of them, like a different girl for each of them. And the stories are quite different. This one then follows them three years later after graduation and seeing where they're at in their relationships. And I'm really looking forward to picking it up because I really did love the off-campus series. I had a great time with it. So I am looking forward to picking this one up. Then I have It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover, which is the, is it the prequel or sequel? to uh it ends with us oh i think it's the it's the sequel but with with flashbacks in the first one with it ends with us we had flashbacks of uh lily and in this one we're gonna have flashbacks of atlas so basically in the first one it ends with us we're following lily and atlas uh we follow lily in current day meeting who will then be her partner and she ends up in quite a violent relationship and then we have flashbacks of her with her childhood sweetheart atlas <clears throat> who was a homeless boy living in the house next door to her and um she's i think she's like writing She's still got the diaries, I think, um, and she's reading them. She's in the process of reading them in her current day situation. Um, and then in this one, we follow again Lily and Atlas in current day, and we follow them from Atlas's POV in the past. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to picking this one up because I've read It Starts With Us, no, It Ends With Us twice now, and I love it. It's a five-star read for me every time. Then we have Every Seventh Wave by Daniel Glatter, which is the second one to Love Virtually by Daniel Glatter, which I recently read um, in January and actually really, really enjoyed. This book is told in a series of emails um, back and forth between two characters who are Emmy and Leo. Um, they meet accidentally via Emmy's trying to cancel a magazine subscription and she accidentally sends it to Leo several times because they never get back to her, obviously because it's the wrong email. And then they end up emailing back and forth and they end up building a relationship online. Um, but there is an element of adultery going on in here that I'm not a huge fan of. I did give the first one three stars but I'm intrigued enough to continue on with it. So Victoria did send me this one um, and she was the person that sent me the first one and also had me reading the first one from my Patreon jar. So thanks Victoria for pushing me to read this one but I really did it. I didn't, I didn't, there was a lot of things I didn't enjoy about the first one but I enjoyed the element of reading these emails back and forth and the way it was done and I did enjoy that side of things. I hated the characters. I thought they were in 
insufferable um, and I didn't like the adultery side of things but otherwise I did enjoy it uh, and it was a good time and I can't wait to continue on with this one and I think this one might be something that I try and get on my March TBR because I feel like if I don't read it soon I might not pick it up because I'll lose momentum with the series. Uh, then we have Death by Laura Thalassa, which is the fourth and final book in the Four Horsemen Quartet. I did start this one in January and I got to page 59, but I'd been reading them back to back and at that point I got sick of it because the story is quite repetitive. Uh, this follows the Four Horsemen and basically they come down to Earth and do their Four Horsemenly things. And uh, this one is following Death. But they each of them ends up meeting a woman and the woman's trying to stop them from doing what they're doing and they end up falling in love and that's basically the premise of the books um and i did enjoy the others I, it's just that the stories are very repetitive because they're very samey um but i know that this one is going to build up to something else and i'm intrigued to find out what that is so i do want to continue on with this and finish the series out then we have her soul for revenge by harley larue i loved her soul to take um which was the first one in this series this is going to be a trilogy so i don't know when the third book is coming out when did this come out i hope it's soon 2021 so hopefully soon for the third one uh, but right now this is the second one this is the final one out um and this series in the first one again it's a like a companion novel in the first one we followed uh two people basically she made a deal with a demon uh for her soul and uh it was a relationship between them in this one this one is going to be a revenge story um juniper and also zane and a cult tried to wreck um, tried to sacrifice Juniper essentially. This is where the story all came about in the first one and this is how we met Juniper and Zane, Zane in the uh, first one. So this one is following Juniper's revenge on these people that tried to sacrifice her in a cult and Zane is helping her out. She's, she's basically uh, given her soul to Zane who is also a demon to help her exact revenge on these people and I'm very excited about it because I loved the writing style in the first one the sex scenes were incredible so I'm looking forward to continuing on with that series then we have a kiss for a kiss by Helena Hunting this is book five in this series I think or book four probably book four um this one follows a group of guys from a hockey team and in this one, we follow the general manager of the hockey team, um, Jake M Matteson. Hang on, I've read this. What is this doing on this shelf? I've read this. 33 books. I've read that one. Uh, we have Bad, Rep Bad Girl Reputation by L. Kennedy. Uh, this one follows the brother from good girl complex um so in the first one we do follow um a relationship and in this one we're following a second chance romance between genevieve and evan um and i'm intrigued to get to this one because i really did love the writing style in the first one and i enjoyed evan as a character in the first one as well so i'm looking forward to that then we have The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. This one is the third in this series. It's deemed, again, it's deemed like a companion novel, but I think see it as a series. Um, and in these books, we always follow um, someone with autism. Um, and I really enjoy having that element of disability in here. And in this one, a woman struggling with burnout learns to embrace the unexpected and the man she enlists to help her in this heartfelt romance. Um, so I am looking forward to picking this one up indeed i just haven't done it yet and this is the afterlight edition as well then i do have a storm of ice and stars by lisa ludek i was meant to be picking this one up for polathon in february and just didn't get to it i ended up picking a whole bunch of other shit up instead <laughs> um but this one is a companion novel to a shiver of snow and sky which i read last year for polathon and really really enjoyed um and this one is following jana who a red light appears in the night sky fear and suspicion falls over jana's village like a blanket of snow the borders are barricaded in a desperate attempt to keep out the plague no one will be permitted to enter lest they bring infection with them um but jana refuses to turn her back on her village and she wants she ends up being cast out by the people and she's trying to save them um so it sounds very intriguing polar fantasy i will try and save it i think if there's another polar fantasy for 
this year i'll try and save it for them and i do have a couple of mysteries so we do have a good day to pie by misha pop which is the second one in the series i loved the first one it was so good um and i read it in a very quick period actually it was called magic lies and deadly pies and i had a great time and we're following daisy who can bake magic into her cakes to kill off people um she does it in a vigilante type sense uh she's basically hurting people that hurt others um or are bad people in general but i really enjoyed it, it was very good so i'm looking forward to continuing on with this series then we have As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson, in which we follow Pip, a young girl who in the first book is investigating the death of a girl from her town, which is deemed a suicide, but Pip thinks there's more to it. She's got like, there's like podcast elements in here. There's all kinds of different mixed media and it's really, really good. Um, this is the third and final book in the series and I ended up DNFing it, soft DNFing it a few years ago because of the stalker element in here but i want to try and come back around to it because i really do want to finish this series off because i loved it so much so hopefully i will get to this one very soon then we have the sinister mystery of the mesmerizing girl by theodora goss which is the third and final book in the athena club series i really love this series we follow mary jackal and a whole bunch of other daughters from monsters of you know literature past uh so we've got mary jackal we have uh lucinda Val Van, Van helsing uh we've got sherlock holmes is in here as well um and there's a whole bunch of others uh Diana Hyde, Beatrice Rappuccini, Catherine Moreau and Justine Frankenstein. So there's a whole bunch of others and it's just fantastic and the element of the fact that the girls, this is essentially Catherine telling the stories of what they're doing and the girls interrupt her all the time and they're like that's not how it went down or you know something else it's just very good i love the way they interrupt the audiobooks are fantastic i would recommend then i've got some middle grade and we start off with starfell willow moss and the magic thief by dominique valente this is book four in the starfell series in which we're following a young girl called willow um and she yeah willow moss it's on the front of the cover and basically she's a witch in which she can find things for people um so in this one i assume there is a magic thief um and i really enjoy this series it's very good it's a great one to just listen to while i'm pottering about doing other things but there's also gorgeous illustrations in here it's a very good middle grade series and i have a good time with it so looking forward to finishing that one off then we have the third in the Avalyn Jones series, which is The Vanishing of Avalyn Jones by Phil Hicks. I really love this series. In the first one, Avalyn Jones ends up finding herself in a small town with her mum and her aunt, I think. And she finds herself in this bookstore and um, she's being haunted. And she ends up finding this diary of the girl who's haunting her and she's trying to figure out what's going on. And it's very good. I just really enjoy it. So in this one, I think her uncle goes missing um and she's trying to find him uh so i'm looking forward to finishing out this series then we have Ramesia Ever After, which is a collection of fairy tale stories that are retold. Um, and I really enjoy this. And I really enjoyed the first one, Ramesia A Tale, a Fairy Tale. I gave it three stars. It was a good time. So I did get the third one. And there are little illustrations. Not the third one, the second one. There are little illustrations in here. I don't know if there's going to be more in this series, but um, this is the latest one out at the moment. Then I have The Christmas Saurus and The Naughty List by Tom Fletcher, which is the third book in the Christmas Saurus series. I've had this for ages now. I think this came out like two years ago or something and 2021 and I just haven't picked it up yet and I need to do so. Um, so I love this series. We do follow our main character who is called William Trundle um, and he's in a wheelchair and he ends up coming across this egg in which there is a dinosaur in it and he becomes the christmas saurus and works for santa william and santa end up becoming really good friends there is a bully element to it and i just really love this series it's very very good it is very young um as you can see from the writing there's so many illustrations and stuff it is really young and i do plan on saving these for thomas at some point because i did get in the picture book this christmas just gone for the christmas saurus and he loves it so i am hoping to save these for them but looking forward to finishing this series out 
Then I have Bitter by Aquakea Meze. The first one is Pet in this series. And this one is following Pet's mother um, in this one. It was ridiculous that adults wanted young people to be the ones saving the world as if her generation was the one that had broken everything in the first place. Again, companion novel, but I'm putting it on here as a final book because it is part of the series. So I am looking forward to reading this one as well because I really did enjoy Pet. I thought it was very, very good and very clever. And then the last one in middle grade is A Marry in the Great Game by B.B. Alston. This is going to be a trilogy, I'm aware, I, I, as far as I'm aware anyway. And the third one's going to be coming out on the 28th of September. So I am aiming to kind of save this for around that time so I don't have to reread it again when the third one comes out. But this one follows A Marry who in the first one she's looking for her brother and it turns out he worked for the supernatural affairs of Bureau... <laughs> Uh, the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs uh, it's a little bit like Men in Black um, and he'd gone missing and she was trying to find out what had gone on with him and she ended up joining the Supernatural Bureau of Supernatural Affairs um, to try and find him and she wanted to find out what happened to him so um, we carry on I love this series. This is the Waterstone Special Edition to match the Waterstone Special Edition I got off the first one so I am looking forward to finishing this series off Okay, I've had to go ahead and put the lighting on because uh, it's gone real fucking dark in here. <laughs> okay, let's carry on. So, I have A Wild Daughter by Joanna Ruth Mayer, which is the second one to Echo North, which I just read for Polathon and really, really enjoyed. It's an East of the Sun, West of the Moon retelling. And this will continue on with the story, I believe. So, I'm very, very excited to carry on with it and give this one a read as well. Um, this is one of Jade's favourite series of all time, so... Well, Echo North is one of her favourite books anyway. Um, so, looking forward to that one. Then I've got Girls of Fate and Fury by Natasha Young, which is the third in the Girls of Paper and Fire series. I, I've been meaning to read this for so fucking long and just have not. This came out in 2021 and I haven't read it. In this series, we follow Lei, who... Um, are we, oh no, are we following Leia or Ren? I can't even remember. We're following a girl who ends up being taken to this uh, palace where they, the girls are concubines for the Demon King. Um, there are a lot of triggers for this series, so just be careful with it. But there is a female-female um, relationship in here and I really did enjoy the first two books so I do want to get on with this one and pick it up. I just need to read a recap of the first two books because I can't fully remember what's happened and I don't want to reread them because I've read Girls of Paper and Fire twice now and it's it's got some very very hard topics in it and I don't want to have to put myself through that again if I can help it. So I would like to finish that one off. Then I've got This Coven Won't Break by Isabel Sterling. I think this was on last year's as well. Um, this one follows a series of witches. It's the second one to These Witches Don't Burn, which I really, really enjoyed and read friggin' ages ago. Oh, it's literally the sequel to These Witches Don't Burn. Um, and we, fo we follow a group of young witches, basically, and uh, in the first one, the townsfolk were trying to burn the witches and it didn't go to plan. Again, I think there's a female-female relationship in here, if I remember correctly, and I am looking forward to continuing on with it. I don't know why I've not picked it up, to be honest, because I really, really loved the first one. Then we have Bloodmarked by Dion, Tracy Dion, sorry, Dion Tracy. Uh, Tracy Dion, which is the second in the Legendborn series, which I read on a whim last year, at the end of last year, and really enjoyed. It's a uh, King Arthur reimagining if you like rather than a retelling it kind of it has the legend of king arthur and then it continues on with that legend uh many many years later and i really enjoyed the first one and i do want to continue on with this series so i'm very excited to pick this one up i don't know if this is the last one in the series but i am looking forward to it nonetheless it's the latest one out this came out literally at the end of last year so looking forward to picking that one up as well then I have Lost in the Moment and Found by Shauna Maguire, which is the seventh, seven, eighth book in the Wayward Children series. Uh, this series follows um, kids that basically find themselves going through portals to other worlds, spending time in them, periods of time, and coming back to their old normal world and either not adjusting to life properly and wanting to find their door back to their, through their portal or um just taking their time to adjust back to life and they end up in this home for wayward children and um they 
it, this series continues. It's short. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. You've probably heard about it, so that's it. I have The Fall of the Argosi by Sebastian de Castel, which is the second in this duology. Uh, the first one being The Way of the Argosi, which I read a while ago now. And this one is uh, YA Zombies, Mages and Madness. Ferius will face them all in the first one we are following. Ferius, who is a mage, I think. Um, and she is... Uh, we're just we're following her in this series i honestly can't fully remember what happened in way of the agosi um but i did enjoy it so i do want to continue on with it and finish the duology out i do love sebastian de castell's writing style but i do prefer his adult stuff more than his ya stuff so there's that then i have a queen of gilded horns by amanda joy i absolutely loved a river of royal blood which was a book that came in a fairy loot box i think it's one of the most underrated books on my shelves i don't see a lot of people reading it i know jade loves it as well and she says the same thing and i really really loved it it was about two sisters who were basically battling it out for queendom i think if i remember correctly they both have very different magic one of them has been getting help from the mother the other's been getting help from the father and um they're trying to battle it out and i think this will continue on with that story i can't remember what happened at the end looks like it's going to tell me um but i may need to do a recap there is a prologue though so maybe it does tell me about that but i really did love the first one so i'm very excited to get to this one i just don't I, I know the reason why I haven't got to it because I'm fucking terrible with sequels, sequels and that's the whole point of Final Book Support Group. Then we have Miss Rule by Heather Walters which is book two in the Malice series which is a fairy tale retelling of... I can't fucking remember. Um, it's a retelling of a fairy tale though and I really enjoyed it. It was queer, it was very, very good and I had a good time with it. We're following Alice and um, Malice and this continues on with that series listen i am terrible when there's this many books to go through i'm terrible at describing them all i don't know what to tell you go and have a look on google <laughs> then we've got god slayer by zoe hannah miku mikuta which is the second in the gear breaker series i picked that up on a whim and really really enjoyed it it's a sci-fi and now i have the second one so i'm very very excited and this one says he saved me plucked me from gear breakers corruption instead of slaughtering me like i slaughtered them lost but found and home again in godola this holy place this merciful place uh there is a good uh sci-fi element to this we're following eris who wants to invade um the gear breakers because she needs to exact exact revenge i think for her family if i remember correctly um and she basically manages to get into the gear breakers as a soldier and then she's wanting to bring them down from the inside out essentially um but all does not go quite to plan i don't think in the first one if i remember correctly and then we're going to continue with god slayer so looking forward to that then we have Iron Heart by Nina Varela. This one is the second in the Cryer's War series. I really enjoyed Cryer's War. It was very good. This is following a relationship between a normal human girl and a uh, and a maid girl. Um, an unstoppable love between go two girls, one human, one maid, both set on destroying the Iron Heart. So um, it's it's a very good series, like a sci-fi fantasy element to it. And I really did love Cryer's War. Again, just fucking terrible at picking up the sequel. And then finally, we do have Heart of the Sun Warrior by Su Lin Tan, which is the sequel to Daughter of the Moon Goddess. Goodreads keeps telling me that this is going to be a trilogy. However, this literally says, book two in the best-selling Celestial Kingdom duology. So it's a duology, but Goodreads is telling me there's a third book. I think it's that there is a, a third book that's going to be part of the same world but a bunch of different characters so it's not part of the series it's just part of the same world um but i really loved the first one of this series we were following um zing yin who was fighting for her mother's freedom essentially off this planet she'd been bound to this planet she was fighting for her mother's freedom um in the first one and i really enjoyed it i was buddy reading this one with one of my patrons claire and we had a really good time and we're going to buddy read this one in march so i will be finishing this one off in march 
also so there's quite a few on here that i can get to in march um i would really like to narrow this down by i want to say at least five in march but if i could reach 10 that would be fantastic there's obviously a couple graphic novels on here there's a couple shorter uh romance books on here so it could be possible but we're going to see how it goes so yeah if you want to find out how many of these end up on my March TBR, make sure you check out my March TBR, which will go up after this video. Uh, but yeah, I hope you have enjoyed. Chat to me in the comments down below. Do you think there's any that I should be prioritising over others? I am hoping to do a continuation station video at some point as well, which is basically books that are partway through a series that I'm up to. So um, we'll see when I get to that video. But I just felt like this video was appropriate to film before a month-long final book support group readathon so yeah chat to me in the comments down below let me know if you've read any of these should i make some of them priority over others and yeah i hope you have enjoyed this video and i shall see you in the next one bye for now